Okay, so when you're trying to do the Hungarian algorithm, basically what it does is it works out how to allocate a task to an individual employee, or it can be allocating preferences or anything. So we can't have any individual task be skipped. Um, and we also can't have any individual person doing all of the tasks or doubling up. So what that means is that we need to make sure that we allocate a task to each individual person um, that they are going to be the best alternative at. Um, so the Hungarian algorithm basically goes through all the different possibilities without us actually having to consider every single one of them. We can just work through the steps. So the first thing that we do, the textbook does do it in a bit of a confusing way. Um, you can speed it up a little bit by not doing the covering the zeros with a minimum number of lines every single step of the way. You'll usually find you need to uh, subtract from the rows and the columns first before you'll even be close to allocating. So we can cut it down like this. So the first thing is we want to identify what is our minimum number in each of the rows. And this is going to work out who in this case, uh, for say operator A, um, person A, this works out what they're best at, which machine in this case they're going to be fastest at if these are all the times that they take to complete using those machines. So we can see their best machine, their minimum number, is just here at machine Y. Person B, they're gonna be best at Z. Person C, they're gonna be best at Y as well. So we've got a tie, and this is where the Hungarian algorithm will, will come in handy. And then with D, uh, person W here, uh, sorry, machine W is gonna be what they're gonna be best at using. So we can kind of see that we could probably already allocate machine W to person D. We could probably allocate machine Z to person B. But the problem then becomes, how do we allocate machine Y and who gets machine X since no one seems to be best at using that machine? What we've also got to factor in is that even though there's a tie between A and C, there may be a better alternative in also giving, say machine Z uh, to person B because perhaps the, the alternative for persons A or C might actually be better if they were to be given Z. Doesn't look like that's the case in this one, but never make any assumptions. If you can't allocate immediately, follow the entire algorithm. So the first thing we do is what I would just call row reduction. So we're just gonna subtract the minimums from each row. So you can see here we wanna subtract 26, here we wanna subtract 26, subtract 23 and subtract 20. And we'll put our answers down here. So if we subtract 26 from each of these, um, we'll get 12 in this position, uh, then we will get nine in this position we should get a zero every time wherever the minimum occurred 26 minus 26 and then 54 uh take away 26 is going to be 28 and then we can keep going so now we take 26 from all of these numbers we get six 26 take away 26 is going to be sorry nine take away 26 32 take away 26 six again and 26 take away 26 there's our zero taking away 23 uh, so then we'll have 21, then three is our zero, 35 take away 23 is then gonna be 12. And then finally take away 20 from everything. So zero, six, uh, then 12 and nine. And so what this does is it now shows you the excess number of minutes that each person would take on each machine if you weren't to give them their preferenced machine. And so the idea is we're constantly looking for the minimum number um, and for zeros, because zeros represent the best possible allocation. So then this is where the textbook would say to do the thing where you cover it with lines. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go straight into a column reduction um, to save ourselves a step. And we can see that anywhere where there's columns of zeros, you're just gonna be subtracting zero. So let's circle that. They're clearly gonna be the minimums you don't really have to circle all the zeros. But this one here, the minimum now is three and there's a tie. So we're gonna now subtract zero from here, take three from this column, uh, take zero from this column and take zero from that column. So all the ones with the zeros, they're really just gonna be copying them in. So we may as well just get that out of the way. Six, 21 and uh, zero. And then here we're gonna take away three from everything. So that'll give us nine, take away three, six. We'll have a couple of zeros along here and then three, and again, all of this will be copied in because we're just subtracting zero in this case. And this will happen a lot, saves you a little bit of effort. 
And there we go, there's our column reduction. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're now gonna try and cover the uh, zeros with the minimum number of lines. So wherever you see rows or columns of zeros, two or more, then generally that indicates to put a line that way. So I can see, for example, a couple of zeros going this way. I can see two in that one there. Um, I could have gone this way as well, but it probably won't make a difference. Um, and then here, I'll do one that way. It doesn't matter whether I do row or column to cover that zero and this one as well. And so now what this means is technically when you can cover all the zeros um, in the minimum number of lines where that number of lines is equal to the number of allocations you have to make four, then technically it actually does mean that you can already allocate. So we may not have to go to this next step, but I'll go through it anyway and I'll come back to this here. So what we would then do is look at what is the minimum uncovered number. And in this case, the minimum number that is not covered by a line is gonna be three, like this. So let's circle that. And what you do in the next set is you're gonna add three to all of the crosshairs, the ones that are covered twice. Um, and then you're gonna subtract three from all of the uncovered numbers. All the ones that are covered by a single line, they're just gonna be copied in, right? The idea is that those are often gonna be zeros. You wanna keep a autosave of who was the best option in each particular case. So if we add three, I like to do it by position. If we add three to those four spots that are in those crosshairs, we can see we get six plus three is gonna be nine. Uh, 21 plus three is 24. And then over here in column Y, we have uh, nine and then three, like that. Let's also then copy in all of the covered numbers because they're not gonna change. So 12, zero, we have a zero here and a zero here. And then we have a 12, a zero, a zero and a 12. Seems to be a lot of the same number. And then we're gonna subtract three from all of these uncovered numbers. So we're gonna get a zero where that three was. And we're gonna have three here, six here and 25 here. And then what you would do is try to cover all the zeros again with a minimum number of lines. And uh, if it still didn't work, you basically just reroute back to the minimum row subtraction, but you would use your updated numbers, basically. It's very rare for that to happen, so it often doesn't, doesn't occur. So if we now, I'll uh, switch colors here, I might go to green. And so if we try to cover all of them, we've got three zeros here, so I might go for that one, switch to a straight line. Um, then I can cover like this one here, and then I've got a couple of zeros there and another one there, and you can see again, I've been able to cover all the zeros, and the minimum number of lines it took to do that uh, was still four, so it tells me I'm ready to allocate. Technically, I was ready to allocate over here. And so what that means is, if we get rid of some of those lines now, normally you'd have those drawn in, um, we would allocate based on the zeros, so I like to go for the fussiest jobs and people first. So if you look down each of the columns, if there are any columns where there's only one zero, then circle that zero. So we've got only one person D is best at using machine W. There's only one person that's best at machine Y here. There's one person that's best at machine Z. And that already does the allocation. You may also find certain rows have only one zero. So in this case, there it is there. And that then has got your allocation for you nice and easy. So that means that person A should go to machine Y We'll do like a bipartite graph here as well, A, B, C, D, and then, uh, actually I'll do that a little bit differently. Let's put it in order. W, X, Y, Z. So person A should go to machine Y. Um, then person B should be allocated to machine Z. Uh, person C allocated to machine X, and person D allocated to W, like that. But we can also prove, we can come back over here for a moment and we can see that uh, I just kind of roughly get rid of some of these. Don't know if that's gonna work very well. Um, like that is, it's gonna have to do, I think. Um, so we can see that the zeros we've got, we might go for rows here. There's definitely a zero, only one zero in that row. There's only one zero in this row as well. Uh, there's only one zero in this column. And therefore by default, even though there's two zeros and two zeros here, um, there's only one option left for C. 
they must have been better at a lot more tasks, which means that they're a little bit less picky on who we allocate them to. And we end up with the exact same allocation, right? Um, and so really what that proves is that if you go down the algorithm too far, it won't make a difference. Ideally, you want to find when you can allocate as soon as possible. And that is when the number of lines is equal to the number of allocations. That is the minimum number of lines that it takes. As soon as you can do that, um, then you're free to allocate. The textbook says that you can do that at every single stage, and that is technically true, but you'll often find you won't be able to allocate until you've at least done the row and column reduction. So there's really no point in checking here and here because it's very, very unlikely to ever be the case. And it doesn't take all that long to, to fill it in anyway. So even if that was the case, then it means that you can just answer every question in the same style. You don't have to kind of adapt to different questions. You can just take that same strategy every single time. And there we go. So that's the Hungarian algorithm. Um, we just do minimum row, row reduction, column reduction, and we check with our lines we can allocate minimum number of lines to cover all the zeros. If the number of lines is equal to the number of allocations, we allocate from there looking for the restrictive rows and columns with only one zero in them to start off. If we can't, if we uh, if it takes five lines or three lines uh, to cover all the zeros and we need four, then it means that we need to keep going. And that's where we add the uncovered, the minimum uncovered number to all the crosshairs, subtract it from all the uncovered numbers and then reallocate from there. So then you try the lines again. If that doesn't work, go all the way back to row reduction, start the process again.